this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown if i'm on the mission is you riding like some michelin homie in the kitchen fire stones how he whipping it i be on my michigan blue and yellow vintage it's make a right on michigan 69 too hot for us stick on me like hockey puck penmanship like hamilton damn fool i go aaron burr 290 life just a blur let me explain to y'all why i think they could have did better with the death of zion and if you a notification crony hit that like button right now don't even wait now tyreek had a good thing going with zion he had no reason to kill zion the only reason he killed zion was to help diana and the only reason Diana wanted Zion dead is because Don Carter wanted Zion dead. And Felicia went to Diana and said, hey, it's time to get rid of Zion. I don't care how you do it. She was actually looking for Monet. And in my personal opinion, just to give context to my thought process, um, Diana, she really fumbled that situation. What she really should have did was got in touch with Monet because Felicia was looking for Monet from the beginning. Monet could have met up with Felicia or she could have met up with Don Carter and stopped all of this and said it wasn't her problem or she could have sent Kane to take care of the business or she could have went and handled the business herself but um Diana definitely got in over her head but what do I feel that they missed with this Zion situation well first of all Zion came on to the scene they said he was unpredictable that was the first thing that let you know that he was gonna die people in the streets who are unpredictable don't last long um they end up in jail for 100 years 20 years 50 years or they end up getting killed and die young you're never gonna survive being unpredictable in the streets because the streets even though it's a dishonest game it rides off of trust and what do I mean by it's dishonest but it rides off of trust in the streets people need to know that you are who you say you are so if you a stick up kid and you only stick up people from outside of your gang people will respect you and be like all right he's solid yeah he robbed people but he never robbed nobody inside of the organization now if he ends up robbing somebody inside of the organization even if he had a good reason he's probably not gonna last for three months why because now we can't trust who he is as a person Zion was known for uh, getting that work in, getting that work out. He was known for fighting. He was known for handling his business. But as soon as he started to step out of that comfortability of who he was, it was like, oh, yeah, now he got to go. So I knew from the beginning that Zion was going to die. It was, it was evident he was going to die. But I do feel like they missed a lot with the Zion character because um, Zion knew ghosts in a previous life. We don't know where he knew him from. We don't know how long he knew him, but we knew for sure that he knew him. And we can tell that, you know, Zion is around the same age that ghosts would be. So the problem is, is that Zion, I believe he died too early. I believe he could have stayed around. But let's just say for argument's sake, they did kill Zion at the correct time. One thing I always tell you is that they only keep characters around to push the main character story forward. And I felt like Zion had did all he could do in the Tyreek story because all he would be able to do is continue to be his plug. Now, it could have been a couple of times where he could have went and watched Tyreek and Tyreek could have got inquisitive and said, yo, what do you know about my dad? You keep mentioning him. Did y'all grow up together or something? And that could have gave us more context of who Ghost was as a person in the streets outside of Tyreek and Tommy. But when you look at the situation, Power Book 1, James St. Patrick, that told a lot of his story. So that would be like a dead storyline. But if they could have found a story for Zion to tell Tyreek that Tyreek never heard or that Tyreek never seen, well, maybe Zion could have humanized the ghost by saying, yeah, man, I remember back in the day, it was this drug dealer in the neighborhood and he was extorting his family. And Ghost went up to the drug dealer and asked him to stop. And when the drug dealer didn't stop, he killed the drug dealer and his whole organization. Now, Ghost to kill a whole organization would be brutal, but it would be like, yo, he did that bad deed for a good reason. And that could humanize him in Tyreek's eyes because um, in Tyreek's eyes, he just see Ghost as somebody who's selfish, only looking out for himself, 
only want to do what's best for him, don't care about the family, that type of stuff, right? So that's one opportunity they missed. But the biggest opportunity they missed is in the death scene. When Tyreek was standing over Zion and Zion called him baby ghost, uh, Tyreek could have said, don't call me that. And then Zion could have said something to the extent of why. Ain't you just like him? Look at you. And then Tyreek could have paused for a second and Zion could have said, yeah, now you get what I'm saying. Then Zion could have said, I done seen ghosts put too many people in the front of that barrel of that gun. And now you just like him. Tyreek could have had a tantrum and said, nah, I'm nothing like my dad. But from that standpoint, they could have did that, right? But also inside of that same conversation, or they could have had a different conversation where Zion could have broke down some things to Tyreek about his father's past. Or Zion could have gave Tyreek some clues that his father was still alive, if he is in fact still alive, which I believe a lot of y'all don't. And I see the rumblings getting louder inside of my comments. Um, I don't really care. I'm going to stand on what I stand on when I talk about ghosts being alive. But that interaction, I felt like it was um, in vain. I felt like it was nothing really to it. I felt like it was all potatoes, no meat. I felt like it was nothing to grab on from that interaction except for the fact that he like called them baby ghosts. I felt like it was so many different angles they could have went with that moment and they could have kept the exact same storyline. Now, moving forward, I think they're going to take Tyreek down a darker path. And Tyreek's justification is that he's going down this darker path in order to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we all know, man, when you're going down that dark path in real life, most times it's never light at the end of the tunnel. You think you're moving through the tunnel, but you actually just standing still and problems are coming to you and you creating problems. You're never moving forward past those problems. It's not until you actually decide that, you know what, I'm going to let all of these problems that's right here in these streets go and I'm just going to keep walking past them that you actually get to the light at the end of the tunnel. So Tyreek is in for a big surprise. Now, I did a video yesterday. Y'all should definitely go check it out. Um, it's in my Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4 playlist, or you can check it out in my Power Book 2 Ghost playlist. And the title of that video is Breeze Influence Tyreek Used Plan Kanan Used on Ronnie Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4 Episode 10 Leak. So I found a photo from Episode 10 someone sent to me. And basically, inside of that video, I explain how Tyreek may use the same tactic that Kanan used on Ronnie, but the tactic may be used on him, and that may be how ghosts have to come save his life. Now, if you remember at the end of Power Book 3, Season 3, Episode 10, Kanan orchestrated his own kidnapping, and he did that in order to get Ronnie out the way, and he got Ronnie out the way. And in this video that I'm telling y'all to go watch, I explore how Tyreek basically used Drew and he used Drew to probably get Monet where he want her or maybe even to get Kane where he want him. And at that point, Drew actually maybe turns on Tyreek or Ghost shows up and saves the day once Drew turns on Tyreek and try to kill him. Or it could be a possibility that Tyreek gets killed by Drew and then Ghost walks up over his lifeless body just like that. And so one thing you have to remember is that everything parallels between Power Book 2, Power Book 1, Raising Canaan 3. Everything is all tied in together from the origin story of Breeze. Breeze is the one who raised everybody. So a lot of these things that people are doing in Power Book 2, 3, and 4 they've learned these strategies from being around breeze they learned these strategies from growing up they learned these strategies from canaan and that's why it's important to see um the show raising canaan because that gives you the foundation for everything that everybody is doing in these new power series but anyway if y'all missed what i was really talking about the fact is is that i feel like the power writers didn't use zion until his most powerful outcome. He could have made a real impact moving forward on this Power Book series. Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2, Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm 
Fair Play 2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. And salute. Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2 Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm Fair Play 2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. And salute to all my cinema cronies. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair. If your favorite Chicago rapper turned his mixtape or album into a movie, it would be No Time to Play Fair, starring and directed by me, Fair Play 2333.